Republicans are the real snowflakes. I mean, they are. I mean, and there's like liberals who are fucking annoying too. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like none of them want. None of them. None of them want like actual material uh, problems to be addressed. Okay, that's what you need to understand. They do not want like a real conversation around like workers' rights. <clears throat> they do not want a real conversation about labor unions. Uh, they do not want a real conversation around like fucking improving the material condition of um, the American workforce. They do not have that. Like, that's just a, a quick talking point and then move on from that and immediately start talking about CRT, what you see on the television. Okay. That's all this is. All they want to do is just constantly talk about like, oh man, well, the TV man told me that I should be upset about CRT. And then the other side is like, oh yeah, well actually CRT is uh, really good. I love CRT. It's like, and there is, there is one side of that that is actually uh, uh, still on the righteous side. Don't get me wrong. I do believe that like, uh, you know, teaching the American youth history as it actually happened rather than the whitewashed white supremacist fucking uh, uh, version of it is, is a good thing, right? But like, it's not a fucking significant issue. Nothing deep down, nothing significant change in what like kids are being learned and uh, kids are being taught in school. Okay. It's not a real thing. It didn't happen. And, and mark my words, like they're going to move on to the next shit. They might try to fucking ham up this like CRT conversation for the midterms, but like they're going to fucking move on to the next thing. You know, it's just like Antifa vaccine mandates, CRT. It's all the same bullshit. It's just like a way to motivate the base. John Travis Radio Network and the John Travis Radio app. I am your Godzilla of the truth in America, your Oracle of the Purples. Thanks for being with us. Day one of our bus tour, Take Back Virginia. Action, action, action. John Fredericks, a conservative radio host in Virginia, broadcasts four hours a day, five days a week to a national audience. Fredericks is a crucial voice in MAGA world in Virginia and beyond. He was Trump's 2020 chairman for the state and his radio channel carries Steve Bannon's program, War Room. Right now, one of his favorite topics is Virginia's gubernatorial race. We need MAGA- COVID will kill him by the end of the year? Not. Nah, he's like, he probably fucking got vaccinated. That disgusting, slimy hog Steve Bannon probably got vaccinated too. These guys are fucking, they're demons, dude. They, they, don't, they don't fuck around. They don't want to die. They never want to die. They want to survive, dude. They're too smart to get fucking, they're, they're too smart to believe the bullshit they're spewing. Voters, you heard from President Trump at our rally. He called in. You need to get out. You need to vote. You need to vote early. That's the game. <laughs> if you have a pocket square, you're 100% vaxxed up. Oh, straight up. That's actually a good take. Yeah. Game plan. His candidate is this guy, businessman turned Republican politician, Glenn Youngkin. Why, why, is, why is your opponent McAuliffe here uh, starting this war on parents? He believes that parents don't have a role in their kids' education. It's his worldview. Fredericks has what Youngkin needs, an outspokenness on MAGA issues that Youngkin isn't publicly sharing and all the voters yeah. that come with it. John, describe the coalition. Yeah, there's a reason why he's not doing that. Because, like, Virginia is purple. Again, Virginia is the most libbed up fucking state. It's, like, the most annoying kind of Democrats that we fucking despise. Like, the kind that's like, of course we need police. What do you mean? Obviously, like, we need to give cops literally nuclear weapons. Uh, we need to give cops enriched uranium to, you know, separate us from the blacks if they come into our neighborhoods. Like... That's the type of fucking, they're all the DC parents and shit. So it's like the worst kind of fucking libs uh, for the most part. So, you know, that's the reason why uh, uh, you can't fucking hog it up in, in uh, Nova. Of Republicans right now who are coming together for Glenn Youngkin. MAGA plus pissed off parents. That's what the coalition is right now. And if both of those groups stay together. You've never met Texas liberals? I mean, yeah, no, Texas... Texas has some similar libs too, yeah. Uh, Glenn Youngkin is going to pull one of the biggest upsets uh, in the history of Virginia. Earlier, like, give up, dog. What the fuck are you doing? Like, I mean, this is clearly a delusional person. If anything, but if 
delusional if for nothing but the fact that he thinks like that's a come over. You know what I mean? Just just shave it off, dog. What the fuck? Get a fuck. Go to Turkey. Get a hair plug. What are you doing, bro? Everybody knows what's going on here. What the fuck? Did no one tell you? Upsets uh, in the history of Virginia. Earlier this month, Fredericks hosted an unofficial election event for conservatives called the Take Back Virginia Rally, featuring Steve Bannon and other MAGA diehards. President Trump even called in with a shout out. I'll tell you what. Glenn like, the reason why there's like a two-pronged approach here in Virginia is because like, if they were to put this in the forefront of the uh, conversation, then they'd be like, whoa, 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 hold on. I'm a moderate in Virginia. I don't really like this Trump business. He says a lot of mean things and I don't like that. You know what I mean? And that would, uh, that's the reason why he's playing this like fucking weird uh, back and forth game basically. Uh, where he's like trying to fucking, uh, you know, rile up the MAGA base, but also simultaneously being like, but I'm not MAGA, I'm a different... I'm, I'm for Virginia. I'm above party lines. Youngkin is a great gentleman. Woo! Really successful. He loves the state. We've got to get him in. And then there was this moment. I also want to invite Kim from Chesapeake. She's carrying an American flag that was carried at the peaceful rally with Donald J. Trump on January 6th. The Godzilla of truth. I love this, dude. How do you, how can you not love conservatives, man? They're fucking hilarious, dude. I'm John Fredericks, and this is the Godzilla of truth. And then you got like fucking, got wine mom Andy over here with the fucking January 6th flag. It's awesome. I ask you all, I ask you all to rise and join us as Mark Lloyd leads us in the pledge. Fredericks told Vice News that the MC misspoke and the flag was never at any kind of rally. Hard to laugh when they would have me hang. No, the fuck they wouldn't, dude. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? They would have you hanged. These people, like, dude, listen. These aren't the people that would have you hanged, okay? They would look away when you were getting hanged, for sure. They wouldn't care enough. But, like, these people are fucking, they're nothing. They're like fucking couch potatoes, dude. What the fuck do you mean? They would literally, they would fall and, and die on the way to like lynch you, okay? They would be like, Duh! and their heart would give out. No, they're just like, this is fun for them, okay? This is like a little, the, the insurrection is just like a fun fucking field trip. Now that guy's going to benefit from insulin price caps? I mean, fuck yeah, I want that guy to benefit from uh insulin price caps i don't give a shit i want that guy to get all the fucking health care the pledge fredericks told vice news that the mc misspoke and the flag was never at any kind of rally Youngkin also distanced himself from the flag situation saying it was quote weird and wrong to pledge allegiance to a flag connected to January <laughs> 6th. pussy what a pussy come on terry or not Terry, fucking uh, Yunkin. These right-wing voters seems to be working. The race between Yunkin and former Democratic Governor Terry McAuliffe has gotten tight. How do you see Yunkin right now um, sort of appealing to this MAGA crowd and also appealing to moderates? Well, for six months, he's danced on the edge of a knife and hasn't gotten cut once. So it's been a very delicate balance. Glenn Yunkin uh, has done nothing to alienate the MAGA base. He might not be the best MAGA candidate you've ever found. I'm good with him on 80% of the stuff. That's fine. Let's not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. The bottom line is this. Whoever said that about the benefit for insulin caps, a piece of shit, diabetics hurt too much too often to even remotely think that rhetoric is funny. Listen, bro, it's important that people fucking address their grievances with like people that they see as their political foes getting fucking the many benefits because I'm always gonna fucking put that down. I talk about this every day, so it doesn't matter. Even if someone says that, I'm going to fucking own them. Uh, so, you know. If he doesn't get the MAGA voters, he loses. Period. Right? He can get all the independents he wants and all the soft Republicans and the never Trumpers. No, that isn't enough. Youngkin's trying to keep everyone happy. He's keeping MAGA Nation close, but not close enough to turn off moderates in other parts of the state. 
This is Burke, Virginia. We're about 30 minutes outside of D.C. in the Beltway. This is not typically a Republican stronghold here, but Glenn Youngkin has a pretty big crowd turning out for him on a Tuesday night. I kind of, I just, you know, seeing stuff like this hurts my soul a little bit. But, like, it also kind of shows me that, like, I mean, these people, they do deserve the pain and suffering that they're voting in. You know what I mean? And the inaction from the American government in general. Because it's like, dude, you're riled up over the TV man, dude. Like, the TV man got you so fucking riled up that you're just like, yeah, uh, fuck CRT. You know? You just, like, you kind of, you suck really bad. I don't know what else to say. Like, go vote for Glenk, uh, other kin. Have fun with the Blumpkin, okay? When I'm governor, we will teach all of our history, the good and the bad. All of it. So that we understand where we came from. We have abhorrent chapters in our history. We have great chapters in our history. We must know it all, but let me be clear. I will ban critical race theory in our schools on day one. Youngkin is hammering a message on education. That's right. We need to stop the nanny state. I'm a small government conservative, which is why I think we should ban educating the American youth about racism. That's right. And staying away from Trump. So you think the former president might be kind of a liability? Yeah, I think so. Why is that? I think uh, especially in areas like this in Northern Virginia, I just think, you know, he's really unpopular, even more so than a normal Republican. Former President Trump has endorsed Glenn Youngkin. Do you think that it would be helpful for the former president to come no, out? No, I don't. Um, I think that he's left an awful lot of baggage uh, with his behavior after the election, uh, questioning the election, um, fighting the results of the election. But for voters farther away from D.C., President Trump's endorsements. I mean, young conservatives, oh, what a wonderful pause for him. Young conservatives deserve to be sexless for the rest of their lives. So, I mean, you're, you're kind of hanging yourself in that situation and you fucking deserve the sexless, pathetic life that you will live where you're just like constantly angry. You know what I mean? You're just a nerd for racism, dude. So sad. It still means a lot. I'm here for Mark Early and Glenn Youngkin. Uh, I'm here to ask you for your vote. Do you know if you're voting for Mark Early, Don Adams, Glenn Youngkin? I'm not decided. Awesome. Well, All uh, around. Casey Flores, a Republican organizer, was at Frederick's Take Back Virginia event. He's now door knocking for Republican candidates around Richmond. When you saw that Trump endorsed him here, did you think that was helpful for him? I think it's helpful when it comes to the base, when it comes to getting people out knocking on doors. Um, I love Trump. I'm out knocking on doors for him. He's a log cabin Republican, dude. Log cabin Republicans. That's funny. <laughs> Dave Rubin. Also a log cabin Republican. Lindsey Graham. Lock cabin Republicans are homosexual Republicans, for those of you who don't know. It's when you're like, I'm gay, but I also, like, I fucking hate other marginalized identities, okay? Like, I'm gay, but also kind of rich and very white. Isn't the lock cabin Republicans the ones that think Lincoln was gay? Lincoln was bi, by visibility. Milo Minneapolis? No, 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 no. Milo Minneapolis is like a totally different fucking thing. Milo is a is a creature. Uh, I hate to say it, but you saw first down how many conservative thotties were going wild for the Trump Pence trip, sadly. I don't know if they're gonna be sexless races. Dude. Conservative women are not fucking uh these weird losers. Okay, well, this guy is gay, but uh, conservative women are not fucking those like weird like hmm I'm actually a scientific racist like no that guy's like sexless forever okay even conservative women are not like gonna be like alright I'll suck your dick that's not happening trying to fuck me 
Youngkin. How do you see Youngkin kind of towing this line between appealing to the moderates and also to more conservative Republicans and Trump Republicans? Yeah, well, he's been endorsed by Trump, and I think that the positive campaign also helps. You know, mm -hmm. Trump rightly, he did amazing job as a president, but he's not, um, you know, he didn't win Virginia and Glenn's gonna. If Youngkin is able to walk this line between the MAGA faithful and never Trumpers, it'll send a powerful message to Republicans across the country about how to bring their party back together. If Youngkin wins by focusing on education and really staying away from talking about the former president, do you think that that's a signal to Republicans going into the midterms, going into 2024, that that's what their message should be? In Virginia? Yeah. In Massachusetts? Yeah. In New York? Maybe. In um, F Florida? No. This is a state that is blue, right? This is a state that is the first opportunity after Joe Biden's election. That's why the stakes are so high. The entire Biden agenda hangs in the balance of this election in Virginia. That's why it's got national and international consequences, Liz. Like, no one cares. I mean, really.